Hi, in this video I'm looking at this question here which is asking us to work out these values here. Now these values are all about activity networks and it's about when is the earliest completion time for each activity where our activities are A, B, C, G and so forth and for the entire morning routine because this is Cameron's morning routine. So in this case the morning routine is our project so that earliest completion time of the morning routine or project. Um, for all those tasks which can be delayed, we want to work out what's called their float time and the latest time at which we can start them without delaying the entire project and the critical path through the network, the path of activities which cannot be delayed at all. That must happen on time for the project to not get delayed. So to do this we're going to use our tool, tool of forward scanning. And forward scanning is part one of analysis, the critical path analysis. So we're just going to do the forward scanning, and in the next video we'll look at the backward scanning. So the first step of forward scanning is we split all the nodes in half. Because in these is where we're going to write our earliest completion time for the activities and then for the final project. And the reason we split it in half is because the left half gets used for forward scanning and the right half gets used for backward scanning. So we're only going to use the left half in this one. So forward scanning is where we work out at each node what is the earliest time that we can get to that node. So when we are at the first node, our earliest time is zero. Okay. So we always start at zero. Then we look at our next activity. Now our next activity takes four minutes to complete. So this node, we can't get to this node until I have finished activity A and it takes four minutes to complete. We started at time zero, so this node, we can't finish activity A until four minutes in. And that means that we can't start these activities until four minutes in. And now we can look at through to our next node. Now our next node is this one in the middle here. It's just operating off a D, which is working off of that four there. So activity D can't start until this node has started. So we can't start until four minutes in. But it takes four minutes, so it will finish eight minutes later. Then we can now have a look at this node. This node has three branches coming into it, so we have to work out each one at a time. So if I look at coming down here with activity B, activity B couldn't start until four minutes in. It takes two minutes, so we would have an earliest completion time for B of six minutes. But that's not necessarily the earliest completion time for this node, because we might have something that's longer, because we can't start the next thing until everything here is finished. So we have a look here. To get through here, I've got activity E, which takes four minutes, but it can't start until eight minutes happens, so it can't start until 12 minutes in. And then we have G, which takes one minute, and like B, it can, it can start all the way back here at four minutes, so its earliest completion time is five. So the, node, the number that I put in this node is going to be the biggest of all the branches, so we're going to have 12. Because we can't start these until all three are completed, we must wait until E finishes here before we can move on. Moving on, we can now look at this node, and we do the same thing. We have a look coming down from C. I've got 12, that 12 minutes in I can start C, add on the six minutes C takes, and that gets us to 18 minutes. Looking at H, H takes two minutes, starting at 12, so 14 minutes in we can finish H. But again, we've got to pick the biggest number because it's the one that says when we can actually move on. 
So f can start 18 minutes in, and then after 18, after f is completed, which takes too long, we finish at 20 minutes. Okay, and this is the earliest completion time. for everything, or in this case, our morning, morning routine, or task or project, as the case may be. Now there should be an E, so that should be early est completion time for the routine. So that gets us part A. We've now got the earliest completion time for each activity and for the entire morning routine. Each of these numbers along the way is the earliest completion time for each activity. So to get our final answer, we'll work out all the ones in the middle anyway. So now we need to look at all the activities which can be delayed, okay, without extending the completion time. So they're the ones that have smaller numbers than the ones showing in these nodes when we've got multiple paths coming into a node, multiple arcs coming into a node. So the delayable tasks, so the tasks that we can delay are going to be the ones that can finish earlier than the number shown in each node. So we can't finish task A any earlier than four, earlier than four minutes. So it's not going to be task A. But we can complete task B earlier than 12 minutes. So B is delayable because it can be finished after six minutes. So we can wait a little bit with B. And it's the same with G. G can be delayed. We can't delay D or E because that's what's generating our 12 minutes here. Then we can look at this, these two parts here. We can also delay H because it can be completed earlier than the 18 minutes. It can be completed 14 minutes in if we started on time. So we can also delay H. We can't delay C because it takes the full six minutes of this part of the network to complete. And F can't be delayed because it's the only one at the end. So once it's started, we've just got to finish it. So there are delayable tasks. So now we want to work out the float times for each of these. Okay, so I can now have a look at the float time. Now the float time is now the float time is the maximum time that we can delay. Okay, without delaying the project. So the float time is how much I can delay starting the activity by. So I've having the task B. I know the fact that I could complete task B after the sixth minute, it's done. But I do have all this time up to the twelfth minute to get it done. There's no rush, it can happen any time in there. So all I do is I take the difference between these two numbers, the earliest completion time for B and the earliest completion time for this phase of the network. So it's just going to be 12 minus 6, which is 6. I can do the same for G. I can work out its float time. So G's float time is going to be 12 minus 5 because its earliest completion time is 5 minutes in. And so I just take that off and I can, it can be delayed by a total of 7 minutes. I can wait all the way up to 7 minutes later before starting G. H, it's all the way down here. H starts I uh, can finish 14 minutes in, but I've got all the way up to the 18th minute to do it. So it's float time. Float time is going to be 18 minus 14, which gives us four minutes. So B can be delayed by six minutes. G can be delayed by seven minutes. And H can be delayed by four minutes. So now we've done the float time. We can now have a look at the latest start time. So the latest start time is 
basically what time I can start. Okay, so what time can I start all of these layable tasks so that I don't affect the outcome of the total completion time? Okay, so I've done the float time. I can now look at the latest start time. Okay, so the latest start time is, well, I know B takes two minutes, and I've got up until the 12th minute to complete it, so I can do 12 minus 2. I can do the time it's got to be completed by minus how long it takes, and that tells me that I can start it after 10 minutes. Having a look at G, my latest start time, I'm just going to abbreviate this to LST, make it a bit easier, is going to be 12 minutes again, minus how long G takes, which is 1. So I can have 12 minus 1, which will be 11 minutes. I don't have to start it until 11 minutes in. And lastly, for H, its latest start time is going to be, well, 18 minutes is the length there, and I can minus off its duration, which is two minutes, so I can start it at the 16th minute into my project or morning routine. So that's my delayable tasks. Their float times, how long I can wait to delay it, and the latest start time altogether. What is the time I have to start it by so I don't delay the project? And now lastly, I can do the critical path. Now the critical path is the path which we cannot delay. So which cannot be delayed. Okay, so what is the path through the network that I have to stick to? I cannot delay any time at all. Okay, so my critical path is the path that doesn't include any delayable tasks, the ones that I have to stick to. So I have to go through A, then I have to go through D and E because I can't delay those. I can delay B and G, but I can't delay D and E. So I gotta go from D through to E. Then I had to go through C because H was delayable, so I have to go through C. And then finally F because I've got no choice, I have to go through F. And that's my critical path because I'm not delaying anything going through there. I have to start A at zero, start D at four, E at eight, C at 12, and F at 18 minutes for me to finish at that earliest completion time. So that's forward scanning. The trick is simple at the beginning, just split it in two and work out what's the earliest start time, or earliest completion time, sorry, of each activity or of each node. Then I can look at other values, such as which things can be delayed, how long can I delay them for, how late must I start them, and what that critical path through the network is. What is the important thing that cannot be delayed? I need to make sure it happens on time, every time.